and today we will be looking at the AMD Z1 Extreme CPU which as far as I'm aware it's only available right now on the Asus ROG Alley which is the most powerful portable gaming console full review right over here and also down below on the video description but on this particular video i want to focus on the z1 extreme temperatures performance what we can achieve with it and also really curious how we can achieve this kind of performance on such a small envelope like the rog alley that i've got right over here besides the cpu which is the amd ryzen z1 extreme zen 4 architecture with 8 cores and 16 threads up to 5.1 gig Hertz. The GPU is the AMD Radeon 3 with 12 cores up to 2.7 GHz and the ROG Alley has the 16 GB of RAM LPDDR5 with 512 gigs of storage. Probably in the future we will find different configurations around the Z1 Extreme on gaming consoles and also on the mini PC world, which is something that we review a lot right over here and makes total sense for those that want servers and powerful machines in a small form factor. Now, the first thing that struck me most was when I was playing the first game when I did install Plants vs Zombies, which is a okay game. And I saw the kind of results that I was getting and I thought, okay, this is something huge. And after that, I went to do the benchmarks and I was blown away. Now on Geekbench 6, if you take a look, we got 2,329 on single core score and 11,087 on multi-core score. And this is just huge for such a small device. And if we look at the price, it's just completely crazy. Take a look at the review and you'll see what I mean. For those that are used to the Geekbench 6 results, it's easy to find out that this is just mind-blowing in a small form factor. But for those that don't, you know the MacBook Pro with the M1? which is the Mac that I use on my portability needs and video editing, which is a powerful machine. But I also have my desktop, which is my Mac Studio with the M1 Max CPU. And these two devices are completely enough for my needs, actually more than enough. Now, the ROG Alley with the Z1 Extreme is exactly between the M1 Pro on my MacBook and roughly a bit below the M1 Max on my Mac Studio. So the kind of performance that we have right over here is just mind blowing, having in mind the size and then the freedom that we have in a different way that we use a laptop or a desktop. We want to compare with the Intel CPU. If we look at the single core score, it is more or less on the same level of the Intel i9 12,900. 100 CPU, which is just crazy, a desktop CPU performance. And if we look at multi-core score, we will be on the range of the Intel i7 12700, which is once again crazy results in terms of performance, not only on the CPU, but also on the form factor, which is crazy small. But the potential here is from the CPU itself, because it has the technology that will allow to have this huge performance on a small envelope. Taking a look at the Cinebench, we also got a score of 1672 on single core score and 13,000 on multi core score. And there you can compare with other CPUs that will appear on the graph. On 3D Mark, we had 3042 on Time Spy, so it means that we will be able to play all those referral games right over there above 65 frames per second, with the exception of Red Dead Redemption 2. Temperatures was something that I was really curious after watching the kind of performance that we had on the CPU and having in mind the small form factor. So I did a few tests. On Idle, we were getting roughly 45 degrees Celsius, having in mind that my office at this moment is with 28.5 degrees Celsius. So it's warm where I live, no AC turned on. And this is the kind of test that I do. So really good temperature. And we can use with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, any kind of app without ramping up the temperature above 50 degrees. I went further using the performance mode on the ROG Alley using Cinebench so that we can simulate a rendering of a video because this device is completely capable of editing and rendering videos. After all, it has the same performance of the computers that I use on a daily basis. And as we can see in performance mode, the maximum temperature that we achieved was 70 degrees Celsius. But in this mode, we can 
not take full advantage of the CPU. So we change it to turbo mode and there it unlocks everything and we got 95 degrees Celsius which is quite warm but a safe temperature while unleashing the full potential of the Z1 Extreme. This was not all. This is a real world performance test, a simulation of rendering but I wanted to see how far we could go without thermal throttle. So I did stress out the 16 threads that the Z1 Extreme has using a synthetic benchmark and you know that the base core is 3.0 gigahertz and the turbo boost is 5.1 gigahertz. So if we want to thermal throttle we would need to push it below the 3.0 gigahertz. Now it stayed most of the time on the 3.8 gigahertz at 95 degrees Celsius on all the cores and threads and after a good while of time it did lower the temperature to 90 degrees 88 around that to keep it safer i do believe and it also did the performance to 3.5 gigahertz more or less but really far away from the base 3.0 gigahertz so even though we have a really powerful cpu on a really small form factor congratulations not only to amd but also to asus to develop this kind of technology in a small form factor with the huge performance that we have right over here and that being said i will leave you right now with a few shots of the games that i did play out but if you want to watch the full review then link right over here once again hopefully this video was helpful in some way and if it was don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there here always a thumbs up for you on that side of the screen i'm really really excited to see this kind of device and what expect us in the future having in mind the kind of performance and the size that we are getting my name is Alberto george and as always I'll see you guys on the next one. There's one thing that I was missing, which is if we go to the settings, I was playing on the uh, performance mode, but there is also the silent mode, which only consumes 9 watt, and the performance, which was where we were so far. And we can also go to the turbo mode. And one thing that we can see right over here is the difference. At this moment, medium settings, we are with instead of the 40 frames per second we are reaching 70s 80 frames per second which is really awesome on forza horizon 5 we are still with graphics in medium preset medium full hd 1920 by 1080 and ooh, wow let me just restart and a little bit more darkness on the scene so 55 60 frames per second completely different almost it's not the double but almost the double that we were getting on the performance mode so i had to try overwatch again and we are getting different results now with the turbo mode ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we are overing the 90 frames per second which is a completely different result i was happy with the previous results but now oh wow this is really impressive preset high sorry preset high and if we go to our settings here we have the turbo mode which i thought that the performance was the maximum but no turbo is the so really convinced 100 frames per second and overing the 80 frames per second on the high preset plants vs zombies and medium settings which i will show in just a few moments bam there we go so if we go to the menu right over here really quick because i'm getting hit and if we go to video we are with medium presets so at this moment we are above 40 frames per second really cool and the frames per second as we can see hopefully you can see on screen 45 42 okay hi we can see a drop so we will go to a, around 30 frames per second on these settings still on high and sometimes it drops below the 30 frames per second so probably not the best scenario for the horizon 5 and graphics on medium preset and the experience is really really good so far we are with an average of 40 frames per second on a race environment and sometimes it drops like it is right now 30 something 
The lowest that I see that I saw was 34, 35 frames per second, but I don't see the need to lower the graphics less than minimum on Forza Horizon 5, which is convincing me. Less confusion here, so we are above 45 frames per second. We were. So Overwatch 2 and with the preset on high. So let's see how it behaves. Set high and the experience is flawless. We are talking about 67 and then it drops sometimes to 57 at this moment when there's a little bit more of demanding uh, graphics on screen but the experience is really really cool when there's action it will drop to 50s 50 something but but really really playable i would not change this from the height settings if i wanted more frames per second maybe medium but even though i don't justify i prefer to have the graphics like this which are really really cool and the experience of gaming is also really fluid